getting into the rhythm of like writing this will help me visualize it. You know, help me visualize it and like truly understand what I have to get done. Obviously I already know what I need to do today, but like, you know, now I get to go off this checklist of like, this mental checklist of like, I gotta do this three mile run. Gotta come back, change, get this back, right, back workout in, and I need to come back. Probably not gonna change actually. Three to five minute cold, minute cold punch. Day one. Let's get it. Wrapped up, three mile dial. Honestly, hit the goal perfectly. I actually averaged a nine minute pace for three miles. You know, not my best, but like I said, it was, the goal was an easy pace run. <clears throat> the whole time I was honestly excited for my back workout. I was literally just structuring my back workout in my head the whole, the whole run, so that's a good sign. So that's how you can tell I'm in a good mood. So, drenched right now, soaked, wearing the new performance club. It actually holds the water really well, the sweat really well. You know, I don't feel like uncomfortable. It's kind of just like cool and refreshing. This is coming out pretty soon. But anyways, we're gonna change and head to the gym. Today's back workout routine starts with a core circuit. I don't normally work out core, but I'm challenging and I'm pushing myself to do things that I don't normally do throughout this program in this new season. You know, waking up at five to run, that's something that I typically wouldn't do. I would wake up probably like at seven, eight and run. Um, so that was just something new for me today. And then also topping it with another workout, a full strength, back strength workout right after that. So things that I'm typically not used to doing, pushing myself to do it today. The first set, the first workout, or the first movement is a core circuit. So we're gonna figure that out. We're gonna do that today. I'm not gonna skip, I'm not gonna bullshit. I'm giving full effort in everything I do. It is 7.30 guys, 7 fucking 30. I've done a three mile run, had a pre-workout snack. I just had a phenomenal back workout. Probably one of the best workouts for back I've had in a very long time. Timing was efficient. I didn't waste time in the gym. I got a decent pump. I'm vlogging for YouTube. It's only 7.30, that's the best part about all of this. The cool thing is we haven't even got to the fun part. I'm saving the best for last in my morning routine. What we're about to do next, you guys have never seen me do, and I've done it, for, I've done it a couple times before this video, before vlogging it. And now I feel comfortable enough to where I can, I guess, at least show it to you guys. It still sucks, but it's a part of this routine, man. It's a part of this routine, I can't, for me, the results I've, I've, I've seen from doing this make the five minutes of hell worth it. Let's see what it is. Goal 
today is five minutes. The last two times I've done like three minutes. So I put on my tunes and just truly embrace what we're about to hop into. You know, I do love the fact that I did my three mile run. I did a full back workout and I'm doing my cold plunge all before 8 a.m. Like that's a different kind of dial, bro. Like I feel fucking amazing, I'm not gonna lie. I have a whole day of just like work and freedom ahead of me. I don't have to worry about this later in the day. Like I don't have to worry about my workout later in the day. Like all that shit's checked off. I'm good. So now it kind of just feels like, you know, I have these cold icicles on my body that are quickly defrosting. I'm no longer cold because I mean, if you can endure that, the weather outside is not cold. It actually is cold here in Houston, Texas this morning. But man, I'm telling you, bro, one thing I've noticed in the last three cold punches I've done is that my body does not get as sore as it normally would. Like my knees, running is hard on my knees. I already have tendonitis. I'm flat footed. So like <laughs> there's a lot of things that work against me. So the cold plunge has really helped. Last time you guys saw a fuck ton of shoes that I didn't wear, I actually successfully sold all those shoes. And now I'm literally down to the shoes I'm wearing right now, which are Asics, these Nike Romero's. In the deal, I specifically told the dude, I was like, you can take my whole collection, but you have to leave me with these, the low tops, my running shoes, and then some of my going out shoes, and these. I literally only wear these shoes, and I cycle through these four, I guess, tennis shoes, and then obviously you guys see me running and shit now. I wear these four shoes like every day no matter where I'm going. I'm excited about this because a lot of the shoes, I, as, you, as I told you guys, I didn't wear. And now I get to kind of rebuild my shoe collection based on shoes that I actually wear. Um, made a lot of money from the transaction. It was a very good deal. Um, I had to say bye to some shoes that had like a lot of memories tied to them. But, you know, that's just a phase. I'm, that, that was literally just a phase for me in my life. And I'm older now, I'm more mature now. And I'm, I guess I feel like I'm just a lot more simple. Man, I'm really loving this drop. I'm just seeing this close on the models and I'm like, okay, you know, this drop's the one. The last drop was cool, you know, it was I. Right. This drop, I'm really feeling it. All right, guys, day two um, of the shoot. We're at a horse stable. I keep dodging left and right because I keep thinking like these horses are going to diarrhea shit on me. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen way too many movies and clips where shit like that's happened and their assholes are pierced like right out my direction. This <laughs> horse, this horse just like splatter shat, like, like projectile shat into the ground and it was very loud. So I just moved over. Um, anyways. We're really tackling the whole Western theme here, man. We have, I don't know where we're at. We're at some ranch in Houston. There's probably over a hundred horses here. And we're getting, we're really, we're really tightening down that rodeo thing. All right guys, so that was very short lived. I'm already on the way back, I guess, to my home area. I'm not gonna tell you where I live. Um, because Zoe, my eight year old, is not feeling too well. So when mom's working, I was working too, but when mom's working and she can't you know, get away from work, I obviously have to step up and pick her up. So that's what we're doing right now. Um, we're gonna take her home uh, and see what's wrong and you know, take care of her. And then we're gonna hop back into the flow of things. All 
obviously in the last video I put this garden together. Wifey and Zoe and Ryan, they put together their own version of, I guess, the first phase of this garden thing that we're doing. We have red bell peppers, red bell peppers. We have cherries. We have green bell peppers. We have spinach. We have spinach. We have green beans and green beans. I'm assuming they didn't buy the plants for those. They just put the seeds there. And then over here, you have the plants that'll eventually grow the vegetables. So our, obviously our, our goal is to be able to come back here. And if we need to cook that, we can just grab it here and bring it inside. I'm actually pretty excited because I feel I feel very accomplished. I feel like, you know, something that I built is like already being put to use. And it also makes me want to build more. I had a dream or I had a thought of building like a garden shed back here. I know you might thinking you might be thinking I'm getting too carried away, but I believe if I can do this, what it what like it couldn't be harder, it couldn't be that hard to like maybe extend this out a bit and then build like a complete shed. But I think I'll stick to doing maybe two or three of these, two or more of these, two or three, two or three more of these. And then we'll see how that goes after that. Maybe I'll warm up a little bit with more garden beds and do it correctly. And then we'll go to the, the garden shed. Wow, I love sour strips. They are so good. <laughs> wow, this is sour strips headquarters, amazing. I didn't vlog the last time I did the podcast here. This is my second podcast with Max and Joe. I really enjoy it because one, they're my friends and it feels genuine and two, we have a really good time. And I feel like the first podcast was amazing and this one's gonna be a lot better. I will admit the first one, I was definitely a little tipsy. This this time I'm definitely gonna try to control my like liquor containing, liquor consuming. Um, this is giving me life. I was very tired my runs and my workouts the last two days and the work and stuff, I've been very tired. This sugar spike has given me a lot of energy. I think this is about 40,000 square feet, maybe 60,000 square feet. It's huge. It's a lot of candy, a lot of fucking candy. I admire what he's done. Max has been someone who's, I wouldn't say been afraid to like take huge leaps, but he's been a lot more skeptical of taking huge leaps you know, as opposed to like Christian, I guess, I guess supposed to me too. Um, and this is a huge leap and this is beautiful. Very proud of him. Like this is goals for Anaka. Um, our, our goal actually is to find a warehouse just as big as this to kind of fill it up with everything we have planned. So. I just buy it and take it back. I don't want to pay for a thousand. It won't even, it won't even hit your statement. It'll, it'll like the next day, they're gonna repeat. It's like same day. It can get worse. No, because bas basically the reason it swells and goes back down is because the, literally my intestines are poking through the abdominal wall. truth behind building this physique. Ultimately, right now, as of right now, there's really not much to it, if I'm being completely honest with you. I don't know if it's just me, maybe I'm just in my head, but I've just been doing this for the last year or so, because obviously for me, I have competed competitively, I've stepped on stage competitively, uh, in the past. You know, after years, I competed for like 13 years. No, 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 no. I competed for seven years, but I did close to like, between 11 and 13 shows, I always forget. Between 11 and 13 shows, obviously for those shows, I had to do what I had to do to get to the size, the level that I needed to be at to compete with the people that I competed with. Um, full transparency, the last year has been me getting rid, stopping, all that stuff, and kind of just coming back home to like, being a healthy person, healthy enough to have a kid, um, most importantly, healthy enough to have a kid. To be completely transparent with you guys, to be completely honest with you guys, the last year has literally just been me and prescribed medication. What happens when a bodybuilder, you know, goes through the whole 
you know, roided up stage and, you know, wants to have a kid because I've heard that it's impossible to have kids when you, you know, when you compete or it's harder to have kids. Well, for me, I don't know how it is for every single person, but for me, go to a doctor throughout your whole cycle. Make sure you're getting your blood checked. You make sure you're, you're doing everything correctly. You're honest with your doctor. And then when the time comes to an end, when you, you're deciding to hang up the, the ropes, nine times out of 10, you're probably gonna hop on a post-cycle th post therapy, which for me was Clomid. Um, and then if you're really trying to have kids, you're probably gonna combine Clomid with HCG. And that's kind of what I did. I already ran Clomid for a good amount of time. Um, my doctor said that, hey, you know, you can just, you can switch over to HGH or HGH, wow, HCG, not HGH. You can switch over to HCG, try it out. I've been getting my blood levels checked, you know, just gradually seeing my test levels rise and everything else rise has been such a rewarding feeling. And also makes me realize, you know, how much damage I did to that sector of my body when I was competing. And then I see all these kids today that are just blasting copious amount of steroids, way more than like anyone of, I guess, in my circle, in my generation could ever fathom doing. It makes me wonder like, damn, these kids don't have the proper guidance. But that's not, that's neither here or there. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about myself. So in this process of having children, what I do three times a week is I inject 100 units, which is one milliliter of HCG, 10,000 I use into my stomach. And like I said, I've been on it for a year. I'm not gonna, you know, technically state if I'm trying or if I am trying or we're trying to have kids, but I wanna be ready and I wanna be prepared. And I can confidently say that I'm at that stage after being in this road to recovery for almost a year, I'm definitely ready. I mean, doctors have proved that I'm ready. So, Thankful for the sport, and I'm also very, I'm, I'm even more thankful that I'm aware enough to do what I've done to to to, to get on the right path to, to create a family for myself, but also to be in a position where I can share knowledge with my young viewers and people that are watching me as well. Anyways, on that note, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I love you guys, and I'll see you on the next one.